And once we have successfully installed Node, now let's finally spin up our first React application. Like I mentioned before, unlike vanilla JS, React does require more tooling. But luckily for us, we won't have to do it manually. For the longest time, the most popular option for scaffolding React apps from scratch was packaged by the name of Create React App. But as everything in web dev, things are changing and they're changing fast. And as I'm recording the third iteration of the React tutorial, actually there's a better and more popular option called Vite. And yes, it is pronounced Vite, not Vite. Now, since you will encounter Create React App code examples in a bunch of videos and blog posts during the first part of React tutorial, so during the fundamentals part, we are going to use Create React App. And once we get to advanced React concepts, then we're going to switch to Vite. And of course, I'll discuss why at this time Vite is a better option once we get there. Don't worry, both of them have similar setups. So it's going to be a very easy transition, I promise you. So as I was saying during the first part of React tutorial, we're going to utilize package called Create React App. And you can easily find it by just typing Create React App in your search engine. It was created and it's being supported by the Facebook team, which means that we can always be sure that it uses all the latest and more importantly, correct setup. And if you go through the docs, you'll see that the main goal of this package is to speed up our development. Basically, with the help of this package, we can right away start building our awesome React applications instead of tinkering and getting frustrated with complex config setups. And effectively, in order to get started, we want to open up our terminal, navigate to our working directory. In my case, that is going to be desktop and run this command npx create React app and the name of your application. So in their example, it's my app. Now, before we do that, let me explain the NPM part. You see, when we install node, we also install NPM or node package manager, which allows us to quickly install external packages. And normally the command is going to be NPM install or npm i for short and then the package name and don't worry if this sounds iffy it will make all the sense in the world once we install our first package and yes we'll do that throughout the course now why this command starts with npx instead of npm simply because instead of installing the create react app package on our machine which by the way used to be their old approach so we needed to install that globally. And then we were able to create that new React application instance. Now we want to execute this package in order to create that new React app instance. So instead of installing Create React app on our machine, we'll just execute it. And as a result, we'll get a brand new React application on our machine. And yes, basically, Every time we want to start working on new React app, we'll have to repeat the same steps. So let's try it out. I mean, you can type it manually, you can copy. It's really up to you. In my case, I think I'm just going to copy. I'm going to navigate back and first, let's just get on the same page. So as I'm looking at my terminal, I can see that I'm sitting in the root. And I can definitely check that by just typing ls, which effectively is just going to give me all the directories that I have. And notice here, I have desktop. So in my case, since I want to set this project in desktop, I'm going to use cd, which is change directory and then navigate to the desktop. 
Now, do you have to work on a desktop? No, of course not. For example, you can set it up in your documents. This part is really up to you. So I'm going to go with CD, then desktop. So now I can clearly see that instead of root, I'm located in a desktop. Again, pretty much the same idea as with graphical interface. The difference is that now, of course, we're just typing the command. And then I'm going to copy and paste this command. Now, let me right away show you a possible error that you might get. And therefore, I'll just keep this my app and I'll change that in a second. So let's say if you run this command and it spits back the following error, a fix that works for me is to add at latest at the end of create the React app. Now, if the install is successful, then of course you don't need to do anything. But if you run into the same error, just go with npx, then create react app, then add at latest, and then come up with a name. So in my case, I'm going to call this tutorial. Like so again, I'm located in the desktop, we run npx, because we want to execute this package. And in order to avoid this bug, we just go with at latest and then whatever is the name of our project. And in my case, that is tutorial. Press enter. And the package is going to start setting up the application. Now it takes a little bit of time. So I'll stop the video and I'll resume it once the install is complete. Okay, it looks like the install is complete. And like I mentioned before, essentially, we have two places where we can run our commands. We can do that in the terminal, or we can do that in the integrated terminal. So notice here, we have this npm start, run build, test, as well as the eject. And we'll talk about these commands a little bit later. First, I just want to spin up the application. And in order to do that, we need to run npm start. And notice over here, it pretty much says what the command is doing. It starts up the development server on our machine. Now, like I just said, we have two places where we can run that. We can use the terminal, but make sure that you navigate to this actual project. Because at the moment, I'm located in the desktop. So the fastest one is basically to drag and drop this one. And once I press enter, Notice now I'm located in tutorial. So now I can run this npm start. And essentially, it's going to spin up the dev server. However, I prefer the integrated terminal that is in the Visual Studio code. And how we can run that? Well, we first need to open up our text editor. Then we need to open up this project in our text editor, which again, I can simply drag and drop. And once we're done with that, we want to open up the integrated terminal. And in my case, the shorthand for that is control and tilde. And tilde key is located just to the left of the one key. So press this one and notice you'll have the terminal. And again, what's really cool about this integrated terminal that we right away located in this particular project. So I don't have to worry whether I'm in a desktop, or I'm in some other folder, I know for sure that integrated terminal always points back to my project. And let's spin up that application. So I'm going to go over here with npm and start. And effectively, this is going to spin up our React application. And we'll have our application on localhost 3000. And this is how our initial application is going to look like. As a side note, I prefer setting up VS Code and browser side by side, since that way I don't have to switch screens if I want to showcase something in the browser. But it's totally optional. You're not required to do that. Also, it's a Mac thing. So effectively, it has nothing to do with React. So here's what I want to do. I want to Move this one down, then I'll make it bigger, smaller again. Now it's going to be on my desktop. And essentially, I'll grab the code 
and then set it side by side. I'll spend the next video going over the files and folders that we can find in our new instance. In this video, I'll simply showcase that every time we'll make some changes in our code, the dev server will right away update the browser as well. Now, you don't have to code along. Again, we haven't covered what is a source folder and all that, but in my case, I'm gonna go to source folder, then app.js, and instead of this paragraph, I'm just gonna say, I don't know, maybe heading one. So I'll just change from the paragraph to a heading one, and then I'll say react tutorial. Once you save, check it out right away. We see the latest version in the browser, which is really, really awesome. It definitely speeds up uh, our development. And like I said, in the following video, I'll go over the files and folders that we can find in our new React app instance.